I've had the privilege of being invited by Wrightwood 659 to participate in the Architecture for the People exhibit of Bal Krishna Doshi's work. The opportunity came in part because I had had the chance to work in Doshi's office as well as having an architectural practice, civic projects here in Chicago. One of the questions that we felt that was really important was how an architect from India's work that is so humanist in its approach could also have an impact in the context of Chicago and particularly in the context of Chicago neighborhoods. We had the opportunity to really look at how work in exhibitions and studios contribute to the communities we work in and the communities that we work for. Through one-on-one -on -one conversations with artists, journalists and authors, as well as activists, we reimagined Doshi's work in the contemporary context of Chicago. We first had the opportunity to walk through with activist Aisha Butler about how the impact of housing, community, and neighborhoods are so important to Doshi's work, and we see the synergy and this blend as she walks through her neighborhood, Englewood. One of the things that had stood out was the input of the people co-designing this together. How do we take architect and design mechanisms and make it feel comfortable to the average person so it's not abstract, you know, people are not involved in it, but no, like, how do you feel it, touch it, model it, design it, throw it away, start over again? The way he designed it was to fit the people. That's the idea of design. And I always say the people are the architects of their community. He learned with some of the modernist architects, and then 1947 was the partition in India. So he's kind of like the father of making that identity of new architecture, right? You've been ruled for hundreds of years, and how do you create a new identity? And you'll see political change and social change happening in India, and then there's your work here. And even though they're at different moments of time, there's so much overlap and reflection of the issues at stake and the sort of the humanist aspects of his work. I looked at the way the blocks are shaped and thought about how can it be shaped differently? Like how do we flip the way we build the houses in Inglewood? So this is inspiring because it doesn't have to be the way that Chicago structure blocks. Don't think of it like infield housing and what the normal is. Think of it like what will work exactly for the people over here, which is threaded all through the exhibit, like how did this work for them? That idea of people gathering and people making the space is so much a part of the work. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. And it does just show you possibilities. And I think one of the fundamental things too that I'm seeing is the importance of commerce and economics, because that's what's usually missing from our communities, from our work to infuse that into everyday living too. And the Eastern world is just a part of who they are. Everybody knows to go to the market and the money goes back to the village and this capitalist society, the leakage, 69% out of Inglewood. And just imagine if you built to cut that leakage down. It's been the singular way of building, but not a holistic way, more like, oh, let's build a whole food, just on its own. But if it was part of something more holistic, the housing is connected with the food, the entrepreneurs who are supplying the things, get access to housing, dollars going around, it's activity, and then having them a part of the design instead of trying to build it without them, right? And I think those same concepts from India to Inglewood is exactly the same. That's what people want here. Just fundamentally as humans, things instilled in us that we love as humans, right? Like space and privacy and love and laughter and feeling like a productive citizen. Now, I'm not sure of the plight of the folks in India, but here, this is a group that's been suppressed and marginalized for so long, who have never had magnets to opportunities. And so if you was to 
design anything in a community like Inglewood, very similar to India, you will want to create aspirations as you create schools, as you create housing, as you create institutions. And that's what the Regenerator is. It's gonna be these shared apartments with folks who are getting released from prison, but across the street would be homes. Right, and so it's very similar to the way Doshi did the low income housing. You make sure you got things that you need, but then you can actually see or aspire to the growth as a person, right? So it's thinking about every human element of that person from sleep to privacy to play to work. And then how do you build a village or a community around those activities that's meeting everybody on the level that they are. And that's how you really build community meeting everybody where they are.